And uh, I'm going to be in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 26. I like to talk about uh, one of the prominent characters of the Bible, Paul, the Apostle Paul. This is the Acts of the Apostles. And in, uh, this is one of the biggest speeches that Paul did. And so uh, I've tried to cut it down. It's hard for me. I'm afraid we'll be here at 11 o'clock if I stay in too much. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to start here in chapter, in, uh, chapter 26, verse 13. We'll start in reading there. And at midday, in chapter 26 of Acts, verse 13, At midday, O king, I saw in the light, away a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto, Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And you can be seated. With let me have a word of prayer. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the privilege to bring this passage out of the Bible, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the men of God that's out preaching tonight, Lord, the true men of God, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the truth to go out and hear it, that they may hear it, Lord. Give them ears to hear. I pray that, Lord, what we say would be a blessing. Maybe it, it, it gets somebody uh, excited and uh, all stirred up. And make it, may it be a blessing to them, Lord. Maybe it encourage them in the time that we live. So uh, I pray, Lord, that this will help somebody in Jesus' name. Use me, Lord, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so here's Paul. He's uh, he's there trying uh, appealing to uh, these people that uh, have come to. Uh, he needs to get a break, and he's been in jail for about two years now. They've got him in uh, in the jailhouse, and uh, Paul was uh, he wasn't just a regular old guy. Let me read you some uh, verses here in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. This is how he came by this. And at that time there was a great persecution against, against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. And this is and, he, and then he... Uh, he he wasn't he wasn't the kind of guy that was driving Miss Daisy around. He was on orders. He was getting orders from headquarters. He was a dedicated person for what he was doing. He was killing Christians and bringing them in. And uh, that, the world's doing that to us today. The, the Christian is a minority, and they're on the run, most of them, because they're they're not saying a lot. Christians don't say a lot. The real true Christian is not saying like we ought to say. And so, um, I got a little, uh, Paul's courtesy in verses, uh, I'm going to go back and get some of these verses that will help us uh, in verses uh, uh, 2 and 3. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Well, Paul had already uh, uh, been to two or three uh, people there in the Herodian family, the uh, King Agrippa and Bernice. They'd come down to uh, have a big party there at the palace. 
because of uh, Festus being, uh, he got a new title there. And so they were all down there several days. Uh, they were having their party. Their, uh, they were uh, a wild crowd, you might say, the Herodian family. A lot of incestuous uh, situations there with their family. So we had a, uh, Brother Paul had a, a situation there he couldn't hardly deal with. But uh, he finally did appeal to King Agrippa and he let him speak there. And uh, King Agrippa and a Bernice came down there at this uh, big bash. And there, if you st look back there on the other page there in uh, verse 25, verse 23, chapter 25 said, And on the morrow when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the, the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at Festus. Commandment Paul was brought forth. So here Bernice and Ag Agrippa come. And um, they, you would think they would be husband and wife, but they're brothers and sisters. And so, uh, and Drus Drusilla, who was, uh, Drusilla, who was Felix's wife, that was her, her. Uh, uh, that was his, uh, her sister, and uh, his great grand grandfather, Herod the Great, ordered the killing of the babies there in Bethlehem at the time of Jesus. She married her uncle. Drusilla married her uncle, who killed John the Baptist, and then uh, Herod Agrippa the first killed James, and tried to kill Peter. And Drusilla was a. Uh, they like to come to the. Uh, poly, they come to the big. Uh, like a, he got a new job, you know. He was he was in that section of the country, and they were having a big uh, get together. You know how politicians do. And so that's what happened. Drus, uh, Agrippa and uh, and Bernice here they came, and they were having a big party. And it said, it said, and Bernice with a great pomp. Drusilla, she was kind of, I think she was a floozy. <laughs> I looked that word up, pomp, and it said fantasy. And that's what this whole family was, a fantasy. They were in fantasy land, like most people today are in fantasy land. Amen. They're out there living. You know, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And that's what's happened. Uh, people, people are uh, they're, they're they're blind. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to the the God of this world. It's blinded their mind. Amen. Our minds messed up. Uh, is it an agenda that the world's done for us? What's uh, what's our problem? But I want to get back to Paul here a few minutes, and uh, Paul's capability. Well, Paul, uh, he got, he got an opportunity to speak, and. Um, he wasn't nervous like I was, you know, like I am right now. He was speaking. He was ready, willing, and he was able. And, um, you know, 1 Peter 8, uh, 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And that's what, that's what he was doing. He was, he was giving out truth. And uh, so we have his capability there. He was taking a stand, just like we ought to. We ought to take a stand. We don't take a stand because we back off. We let the, we let the world uh, uh, dictate to us what, what he's all the way, the way it ought to go. And really, we, we, we know what the truth is, and they don't. And so... Uh, so he, got, he was convicted. Paul was convicted. And so here he, he lands himself... In a bad situation, because he, he had already uh, witnessed to fe to uh, to uh, Festus, not Festus, Felix and his wife Drusilla, in uh, verse twenty-five of verse of chapter twenty-four, and he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, "Go thy way, for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee." Well, that's what happens when you witness to, out in the world. They'll, they'll say, "Well, uh, uh, does your ch what time does your church start?" What you know? They'll have questions about the church, you know. 
but they won't listen to what you had to say. Because you can't give them truth because they don't want truth. They want an easy listening. They don't, they, he said, uh, Paul said, he said, uh, up there how nice he was, he was courteous. He said, he was trying to be courteous. He said, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Uh, how many people hear patiently? Hear the gospel patiently. They don't want to hear it patiently. They want a short sermon, easy listening, tell them that they're okay. They don't sin. And everybody's going to heaven. Which, it, it, you know, that's not uh, true. Uh, the Bible says that few there be that find it. There's not going to be, it's not going to be too crowded. Uh, hell's paved with good intentions. People say, well, I've done good. You know, I've done all good. And I've got my kids through college. I've done, you know, I've done good. I've got money in the bank. But it's good, in, good things won't get it done. You have to receive what, what's out there. And what's out there is God. But they need to, to come to the knowledge of the truth. <clears throat> Let me get on down here into, uh, into verse 18, which is a big uh, evangelistic verse. If you'll follow with me there, it says, To open up their eyes and to turn to them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That's Jesus talking to Paul. He's telling him what, what Jesus told him. What, what to, and he says right here, he says, by faith that is in me. But he says to open up their eyes. You know, that, uh, that's, that's what you need to do is get their eyes open to, to let them see. Because they can't see. You know, a natural man understandeth not the things of the Spirit. They don't understand what you're talking to them about. They don't know that they're dead. But you know, when old Paul was, and his men were going down, the, down the, uh, the highway, I don't know if they was riding on a I think they was riding on a horse myself. I think about them cowboys that rode those horses. You don't hear them mention the camels and the dromedaries and all that in the Bible. You don't hear them, what was their mode of transportation? So I figured they were on horses. And he said they hit the ground. He said right there that they, uh, he said they fell to the ground when the light came in. And you know what happened there? They found they was dead in their tracks. And that's what a sinner does when he comes to the knowledge, when he, when he receives it. They're dead in their tracks and they know they're dead. You know, you're, you are dead till you get Jesus. You know, there's people that's come in here tonight that's lost. They probably think they're saved. I thought I was saved. I, I'd done all kinds of church stuff. You know what I mean? I visited. I went visiting with the, the visiting crew they had at the church I went to. I, I, I ran around with the preacher when he went. I mean, I, I loved doing it. I loved the guys I was with. But it, did, it wasn't helping me a bit. But it took a couple of years before I heard it. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. And it's not the faith that you can conjure up with yourself. It's not the faith that, oh, I'm going to stand up here and I can turn this over. Uh, it's not that kind of faith. It's a supernatural work of God. Amen. It's something you don't understand. Because God gives it to you. If you'll receive it. If you'll humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that you may be exalted in you due time. You know, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to, we'll all stand before the judgment seat of God what's done in the body. Whether, whether it be good or bad. But you're going to have to be born again. Except the man be born again, he said, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So you can't, you can't see it until you get born again. I mean, you can learn this Bible. You can, uh, uh, um, you can memorize it and know what page it's on and all that. But if you've never been born again by the Spirit of God, you'll never understand what I'm trying to tell you. I'm talking to a lot of people here tonight that's lost, that could be saved, if they'll open up their heart, if they'll humble themselves. You know, the Bible says that we all sin and come short of the glory of God. I mean, even after you get saved, you're a sinner because you're in this flesh. You see, we're in a bad vessel. We're corrupt. Our nature's corrupt. And so the only way to take care of that is to call on Jesus, and He'll forgive you because He's a big God, and He'll forgive you. And that's the most important thing a person needs today is forgiveness. You know, we are all sinners, and most of us know that we're sinners. And we know what our problem is, too. We quit drinking that hard liquor. We just drink a little beer now and then. Just a little bit now and then. 
Well, see, we, we, the world comes in, you know, we just married two women. As long as I don't get that third woman, marry that third woman, I'll be okay. They think everything's okay. That they can ride along and be what they want and do what the world does and, and, and do what the church does. But how can two walk, two walk except they be agreed? You know, you have, to, you have to agree with God that he's the only hope we got. In him we live and have our being. How are you living today? Are you living because of who, how great you are? It's all Jesus. My life's hit in with him. That is my life. He's given me more life than I, than I was promised. Three score and ten. I'm on, I'm on his time. Big time now. You know, it gets faster. It's like it gets a lot faster toward the end. But I seen a man preaching one time and he told me he's going to preach about the captain of his salvation. He got up there and he had a heart attack and died right there. Have you told your family that that Jesus is has, is your way? That, that you're going to be in heaven? Are you going to be in heaven? You know, that's the main thing. Are you going to go to heaven? You know, the heaven's a real place and hell is a real place too. Jesus preached on hell more than anything. You've read that in this word right here. But here's, here's Paul. He says... In verse 19, he said, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Like we are, most of us here. We're disobedient. Somebody, you, you, uh, God spoke to your heart and told you to go down to the store and talk to that person. Uh, I can't do that. I don't know enough Bible, and I don't think I ought to. And you go to something else. You know what I mean? But you can be used of God. <laughs> He uses uh, roasters. <laughs> he uses everybody. If you uh, yield your life to him, submit yourself to, to God. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Amen. And so, uh, but he said, he, but I showed first unto them of the Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of the Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works for repentance. So he didn't, uh, he didn't turn to a different direction. He went to every site. And he went to every situation. And he went to every season. He didn't have any uh, certain time that he went. He traveled and did it all. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus there in John chapter 3, verse 3. He said, Verily, verily, which says, I, truly, truly, I say unto these, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in John 3, 36, he said, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's serious business. John 3, 36, you need to read that a few times to get that in there. Yeah, open up your Bible and read that. It's serious business. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. If you've got a living God, is your God living in you? Are you letting him live out here? If he gets in here, he'll come out. Because he can't help you. You know, the, the Father seeketh such to worship him. That's why he sent him. That she could glorify his son. And, you got, and your God's son's in you. If you've been born again. So that's why you need to get born again. And it's no big thing. It's, uh, it's probably simple. It's too simple that people overlook it. It's, uh... So I wanted to tell about uh, the Apostle Paul, the, the most prominent man in the Acts of the Apostles, 17 chapters out of the 28, so all dedicated or all point to him, his life, and what he did. You know, sin blinds your eyes. And the gospel opens up the eyes. And the, the unsaved see just the world. You know what? They just see what's out here. The, the unsaved see the world. Love not, and the Bible tells you they love not the world, neither anything that's in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's what we, most people are. They love the world. And, and what are we going to do? 
without it. Have you, have you got a place you're going to be going to? Are you looking to Jesus? What is your hope? What, is, what, are, you, what are you trusting in? Amen. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Amen. If you'll trust in Him. It's, all, it's putting our, all of our trust in Him and let Him give it back to you. Building up in your most holy faith. Because he loves us. He'll do that because he loves us. And if you'll turn over to Mark 8, 34, 38, I'm going to leave you with something else to think about while you're looking at the verse, uh, John 3, 36, which is a powerful verse. You know, that's my, you know, uh, I've got a big outline here if I had, if the Lord would let me uh, keep it straight here. And got all my ducks in a row. I could. It would probably uh, for somebody had a little bit of training, they could have probably expounded this here. You all would have. I don't know what y'all have done. But turn to Mark eight. And let me. Uh, Mark eight thirty four. Anytime I've ever went to got to get uh, to preach, I'm, I'm, I'd like to see somebody get saved. That's my hope is to see somebody get saved, or give enough word out that they'll, they'll hear it, or maybe they'll go and look, uh, read it. Maybe they'll look it up and read it. Because because uh, uh, there's no book out there. This is our book. This is our this is our roadmap. Amen. This is what God left us, Amen. and He's left it that we could. Uh, be a light. Like Brother Lucas was talking about the other day. We're the light. And, and we're the salt. And he said, where, he said, if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall we be salty? Have we lost our salt? Is there enough Christians to, to get the word out? Have we lost our salt? Do we still have it? Did we get saved and, and, and didn't go no farther? Most people get saved, well, not everybody, but I say a lot of people get saved, they just, they grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus, like Peter was asking. He said what he told them. He said, grow in grace and knowledge. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So it's a gift. It's a free gift given to us, everybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is a pretty long time, people. Amen. I'm going to be living up there a long time. I'd like to see you. If you'll, if you'll call on Him. Okay, I'm in chapter uh, 8 in, in the, the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, and the gospels the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And there at the end of Paul said, what did he say? Paul said there in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he said, I have fought a good fight. Are you all fighting out there? Are you all fighting to make a way? You know, they try, they, uh, there's some men trying to uh, get a man to Jesus. We've got to get them to Jesus. You know, sometimes you might have to kick the roof off. If you read that passage in the Bible, they had to let this man down through the roof. Had to tear the roof off. But they got him to Jesus, and that's what we need. We need to be fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. And then he said, I have fought, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Are you on a course? 
Are you still off course like the world is? The world's off course. You can tell that. You can see your TV. You can look out your door and see how off course the world is. We're in bad shape, friends. We're a sick bunch of people. Not sick world, sick people. It's the way it works. And then he said, I finished my course and I have kept the faith. So there's three things he did. That's the three things that he's done. To, that was his, he's summarizing his life. Paul, that's what he said. I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I have kept the faith. And then there's three things here that we all can do, I can do and you can do. He said, deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Three things. And three things that Paul said. So, I'd like to close with that. With those thoughts that you could uh, be mindful. Ponder on what I'm saying about salvation. The joy of the Lord is salvation. The joy of the Lord is salvation. He is, that's our, that is our joy. Yeah, he said happy. Paul said happy. <laughs> that means, he said, uh, I looked at that too, happy. Because I was trying to find out if I was happy. You know what I mean? I am happy. Because I'm more, i am got joy. But I'm ha happy too. Because I know what's going on. <laughs> I know I'm going. I know I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did for me. Amen. Jesus uh, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. See, I'm nothing but I am in Jesus and he's in me. Just like Paul said, and he's in me. And that's what Paul was trying to, that's what Jesus was telling him right there. And the faith that is in me, sanctified by the faith that is in me. That's, a, that's the only place you're going to get it is, is in Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So it's Jesus. So you think about this. And, and uh, we'll pray that our families can get saved. And that, can, that uh, God will help us. And He can lift them up for His honor and glory. Because He first loved us. And you know, if uh, he's a reward to them that diligently seek him, if you if if you're diligent about it, he'll he'll give your diligence back to you. You may just be uh, notice it one day when you go by, and you'll notice it that uh, it was well worth it. <laughs> it's well worth the following Jesus, because he loves us. And I appreciate you all giving ear to hear tonight. Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And I pray, Lord, that you take what I could say tonight, Lord. I know you give out what I uh, didn't even think about saying, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that you could uh, give them, a, give them a, a desire to uh, get in the Word of God and uh, help, help their self, Lord, that we could grow in grace and knowledge and help us, Lord. We have power. We can have power and unction, Lord, that we could ask of you. Because you love us, Lord, we can ask of you. Because uh, we're of the minority here in this world, Lord. You know that. And I pray, Lord, that you could help them. Thank you, Lord, for the time you give us. Bless Brother Lawson and his family. Help his wife, Lord, I pray. We pray, Lord, for all the requests that were mentioned here tonight, Lord. May you help them, Lord, save them. Heal them, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus on everything that was said and done this evening. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.